holding on to this. And God said, I can't. I want to bless you, but I can't bless you. He, he can't bless you. See, and, and we don't believe in them lying. I've been saying, how about you going to be blessed? Maybe you bring some money. I don't care if you bring a thousand dollars and put it in my hand. If you ain't living right, if you ain't walking right, if you ain't talking right, if you ain't acting right, you shall not receive the blessing of God. Do you put our shack daddy? Do you put our shack mama? That's it. <laughs> I'll just be a thousand dollar preacher. I appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you one day because I show sure can. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 to verse 2. Amen. We're going to be wrapping up soon. But I believe that's somebody in the world. Hebrews 13 to verse 22. First, let's go to Hebrews 11 verse 13. Here we go to verse 13 and verse 2. He would chapter 11 and verse number 13. Are we there yet? 11 and 13 says, These all died in faith, having received a promise. Talking about the heroes of faith. These all died in faith, not having received a promise, but having seen them are a fall and was, a, was, was what? Persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pimples on this earth. Now we need to get a mindset that we are a remnant. A remnant. I looked at my wife the other morning, and she looked beautiful too. When even when she wake up, she looked beautiful. And I looked at her and I said, "Lord, I'm blessed. I am blessed, with Sister Kim." But you know something? I start. I got a revelation. A hundred years down the road, it ain't gonna matter because nine times out of ten, Sister Jay gonna be gone, and I'm gonna be long gone. Hundred years down the road, I looked at them twins over there in the crib. I said, "Lord, they might." You know, technology may have made may increase life expectancy. I don't know. They may be around 100 years down the road. God knows. I don't know. If the Lord tarry, if the number one, if the Lord tarry, we may, none of us may not be here 100 years down the road because the Lord may not tarry that long. But if the Lord tarry, I say, Lord, and thanks you for this way, these babies probably going to be dead. Devil going to be gone. Barry going to be gone. Alan going to be gone. And see, it, 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 it means something to be the little hole in the day. Stop acting like everything you got, baby, you written it. It's on loan from the Lord. Trying to, we spend all of our life trying to make it come on this earth. And when we arrive, it's retirement age. And here it's time to say goodbye. Amen. Have y'all ever heard stories of people making it to retirement age and they die? They made it to retirement age and they retire for one year then they die. All that working and slaving to reach that level of comfort. And when he finally did it, he lose it all. Because we, let me tell y'all something. You're not, you are a pilgrim on this earth. The old folk was right. We let pilgrim pass through this barren land. We, it's a process of time. God is only living a day and months and years. I don't have time to walk like the world. I don't have time to act like the devil. I don't have a certain amount of time to live this day. I don't have a certain amount of time to get my head right and to get in the right place with God. That's why I meet somebody and I don't know whether or not they want to say, baby, I'm next. Because if you don't know whether or not you want to be saved, the clock on the wall is still going click, 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 click. Last I checked, year 2012 going to be rolling out of here in less than a month, pray God, if the Lord tarry, and somebody might be gone, and I'm praying away somebody we know before the end of this year, pray God. And if we got to get it right, we got to get it right, we got to get it right, right now. Somebody, thank God for your husband, but he's just lent to you from the Lord. Hey, you look at your children, take a good look at your children. They are just lent to you from the Lord. Yes, they are beautiful to you. Yes, they are that. But guess what? They are lent to you from the Lord. One day, God is going to call in that long. And they or you are going home. Just lent to you. Why we have that we got for them? It, it, it will get me in people that spend all their time. Trying to figure out whether or not they want to be saved. And they turn right around. It could happen to me. It could happen to me. Which way is Which way is saying? Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 2. It's great. Wait, wait, wait. For they that say such things, the cloud plainly that they seek a comfort. Amen. And the truth they had been what? Mindful of the country, a mindful of the country, for when they came out, they might have had an opportunity to return. To have returned. Verse chapter number 13 and verse 2. Let's go there real quick. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2. 
Be not forgiven to entertain strangers forever, for thereby some will entertain angels on the way. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Don't get too comfortable with your house. Guess what? It's just meant to you. And it's amazing. Property ownership is such a joke. So when you die, you want to take your property with you? That property that you call where your home is at, that's been there for thousands and thousands of years. And guess what? It's been changing hands all thousands and thousands of years. But that's my house, Pastor. That's my home, Pastor. That's why I call my home a drink. You just, that's lent to you from the Lord. One day you're going to have to give it up. You're going to have to give it up. You're going to have to give it up. Somebody else is going to come in and take possession of your home. I pray over I can pass our property down to them and praise God. But guess what? One day they're going to have to give it up too. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. See, as strangers and pilgrims on this earth, we have to abstain, abstain from fleshly lust, which walks the soul. You can't be doing this and that and call yourself a Christian. You can't be fornicating and call yourself a Christian. And I get, they say, can I be real? I know y'all don't hear it a lot, but I know some churches, they let you do that. You know, they let you say, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, and I can still fornicate, still have a shank man at home. Let me tell you in a nice little way. Baby, you're really not saved. And if you die, and if you die, and if you die, you will lift your eyes. Sorry. And I know pastors don't preach like that because they scared me. Number one, I don't get a salary from y'all. I don't preach like that. And number two, I preach like that a little because I do fear God. I fear God to the point of letting me know that one day I'm going to die and one day you're going to die. And if you're not living right, you cannot live wrong and die right. Listen to me. I'm going to say it softly and slowly. Baby, you cannot live wrong and die right. You can't do it. You can't. You can't. Now is the time to get saved. And somebody said, how do I get saved? Yeah, I thought you were next. One more scripture. I'm going to tell you this a bit. Third John chapter 1 verse 5. Then we're done. Tell you how to get saved. Amen. Third John chapter 1. 1 and verse 5. It's probably one, one chapter anyway. It is just, it's just one. It's verse 5, third chapter. Below, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strength. So the same approach that you approach things with, you're dealing with saints in the house of God. Deal with the world the same way. Do the world the same way. Show them some love. Show them some kind. All in bow, all eyes close. Somebody said, what do I do to get saved, Pastor? Well, I thought I never, I thought you wouldn't ask. First of all, you need to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again from the grave on the third day. That's number one. Number two, Acts 2 and 38 says, repent. Repent means to change. Repent means to change. You have to change. You have to change. And be baptized. Number three, be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For remission of sin. Amen. Number four, allow God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Number five, teach the apostles down. Perhaps there's someone in here today that want to change. That want to accept the mantle a bit of stranger, being different. That want to be different. That's got the courage enough to be different. God is calling you today. All head bow, all eyes closed. Would there be one that won't pray, want to make a change today? Want to be saved for real? The Lord is calling. God is calling you.